Hi, everyone. My name is Savannah from China Admissions. And yeah, we have two students with us from United International College, UIC, in Zhuhai, China, Bella and Xiaojing. Bella, can you introduce a bit about yourself? Okay, hello, my name is Ton Yugeon, and then you can call me Bella. I'm from Korea, and then my hometown is Daegu. There are many people may know um, not know about Daegu, but the Daegu is located nearby Busan and then relatively southwest in Korea. And uh, it is really famous city as Hathi city in Korea because the city is surrounded by mountains. And then now I'm currently majoring in globalization and development. And I am your three student. It's my honor to participate in today's interview. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for joining us. And Xiaojing, can you introduce yourself? Uh, hello, my name is Wei Xiaojing, and you can also call me Stella. And I'm a year four student from the international journalism. And I'm also, it's also my honor to participate in this uh, interview. Yeah, we're happy to have you guys. Um, I'm excited to hear more about your experience at UIC. So Bella, can you tell us how did you first hear about UIC and what attracted you to come study here? Uh, okay, so maybe six or seven years ago, my father was working as a professor in university in Korea. But at that time, uh, my dad and his fellow professor, we came to China together for a trip. And then uh, one of my father's fellow professor, who was a professor at UIC, uh, they just called us and they asked us to come to UIC. So we all went to the old campus of UIC at, at that time. And I heard the many advantages of UIC from that professor. And also, uh, when I was in high school, the second year, I wanted to come again to UIC to decide about my final university. So I visited, I visited UIC again, and luckily, I met some Koreans and then Korean professors, and they helped me to decide to come to UIC. So, of course, I think the biggest advantage in UIC is I can learn Chinese and English together. So classes are conducted by English, but most of my friends are Chinese. So I had uh, many chance to learn English and Chinese anywhere. Yeah, you, so you had a very early and unique introduction to UIC. Uh, how <laughs> about you, Xiaojing? How did you hear about UIC? Uh, I first heard about UIC uh, in my last year of high school from a friend of mine. She is a year older than me and was studying at UIC at that time. And during the holidays, she shared with me about her school life. And she said that all her class classes were taught in English and most of the teachers were foreigners. You know, that's what you can really see in Chinese school or the Chinese class. And I also remember that uh, she also said she participated in a lot of clubs. All these are extremely attractive to high school students just like me. So uh, since then, uh, I remembered it, the UIC again when I was thinking about which university to go. So that's, was, that was my first impression about UIC. Yeah, it's a very attractive environment, it seems, that can offer a lot. Um, yeah, so I would love to hear about what you're studying. Bella, you're studying globalization and development. This is a really yes. unique major. I don't think many universities have this course. So can you mm -hmm. tell me why you decided to study it and what you're learning in this major? Actually, when I was in high school, I was the chairman of my high school club, which is called CTW, the Change the World. And then this club activity is main, uh, mainly uh, talk about the globalization and also some um, the issue about the world. So there were many activities and the most memorable things uh, was I was go to Nepal on behalf of the Korea to promote the Korean culture. And then my friends and I were selected as representative of our, our school and then we went to Nepal together. So at that time, uh, many Nepal friends were interested in Korean culture and I was really grateful about their uh, attitude to learn about some culture. So I wanted to become the person who knows Korean culture well and then also inform people of accurate and realistic information about Korean uh, in this world in the future. At the same time, I was always wondering what is happening to other side of the world now and how the world is going to be developed and changed. So maybe it is the starting point that I, uh, I am interested in our major. So and our major is uniquely relevant and comparative platform where international affairs. And uh, we 
study like global trade integration or inter international or regional cooperation or development bank or international organization. And we also learn like the global economic or poverty or technical uh, innovation, this kind of uh, transition studies we recently are learning our major. Yeah, that sounds like a huge breadth of study. Um, what's your, I'm curious, what's your favorite course that you've taken as part of this major? Until now, my favorite course is uh, the Sustainable Development Introduction and Cooperation and Progress in Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, but the Greater Bay Area. Actually, I never know about the Greater Bay Area in China, but most of my friends, they already know or because they already study in their high school. But actually, uh, it is really interesting for me to learn about they have such kind of big cooperation in Zhuhai, uh, Guangdong province and Hong Kong, Macau, this kind of connection. So these two courses are my favorite course so far. Yeah, and being in Zhuhai, you get to see the Greater Bay, Bay, Greater Bay Area firsthand yeah. right outside the classroom. Now, Xiaojing, you're studying international journalism. Can you yes. tell us a little bit about this major? So, uh, in fact, when I was in junior high school, I had a vague dream to uh, become a journalist one day. And I, when I was choosing a university, I found that USC had a major called journalism and communication with a number of sub-disciplines such as international journalism, the public relations and advertising and so on. I feel that uh, this uh, may uh, meet my interests and may help my dream come true. And that's the main reason why I choose to study at UIC. And after studying for a period of time, I found that the international journalism program not only provide me with the theoretical knowledge and the practical skills, but more importantly, it taught me to think and analyze the issues more logically and critically, which makes me more firmly believe that the journalism is the field I love and want to stick to. Yeah. yeah, that's incredible. It's really great to find an excellent journalism program. Um, yeah, what's your favorite course or professor that you've taken so far at UIC? In UIC, there are a lot of uh, courses or the professors that have uh, influence on me, but I have to say uh, one of the professor of our program, the professor Edgar Rian, is the one who influenced me the most. He's one of the most experienced professors in our program, and he teaches us how to write news, how to find out the structural problem in the issues, and how to manage some ethical problems by analyzing some um, real media cases and so on. And I remembered when I was a freshman, I actually knew nothing about journalism, and I was stubborn. And I, so I kept uh, asking him, what is the truth, what is truth, what is truth, something like this. Because I think uh, that is a, maybe a kind of belief for journalism students. And I still remember that what Professor Yun said at that time uh, has accomplished my, uh, has accomplished my college life for nearly four years. And he said, uh, there is no truth in journalism. We only try to Get to the get to the truth as close as possible. It uh, this sentence really reshaped my cognition of truth before and influenced the way I think. Uh, in the later study, when I face some uh, when uh, when I made some events or the issues, uh, this sentence really influ influenced the way I think. And actually, I couldn't understand at first because I once thought that truth is objective and definite. However, as I learn more professional knowledge and have more relevant practical experience, I have a deeper understanding of this sentence. Uh, now I'm a year four student and I hope that I have grown up a little bit. And to my understanding, uh, there may be no absolute truth in this world because things are keeping changing. So the facts we connect are only, uh, can only uh, be called the re relative truth. But 
uh, pursuing the truth is always what a journalist should stick to. So I think that's what Professor Yuan had taught us. Yeah, that's great. I have to say his answer is also making me think about a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. A very good answer. Thank you. Um, yeah, so you two are from different places in the world. Bella, you're from Korea, and Xiaojing, you're from China. Yeah. Um, so I would love to hear a little bit about your different experiences. Bella, as an international student living in China, how has living and studying in China affected your perspective and outlook over your years? In university, I can talk about this about my experience. Like when, I, as I mentioned before, when I first came to China for travel, maybe six or seven years ago. At that time, I only used the cash. But when I came to China again, uh, in my second year of high school, many taxi driver they asked me if I can use QR code to pay some, pay some um, the fee. Or even when I go to some Starbucks or many restaurant, there were many places that use QR code instead of cash. So at that time, I had a little trouble because I didn't have a Chinese card or WeChat. But and and now almost uh, no friends around me they carry the cash. And everything is done with QR code where, wherever I go. So, uh, but until now, cash and card is really common in Korea. But in China, I only I need to just bring my cell phone to go out, which is very comfortable. So I always call my family and say the QR code should be active, active a lot in Korea. So anyway, what I want to say is that it is um, this convenient part, I was able to feel like many development of China with my eyes and that I can feel directly during I live in China. So I want to learn more about like how they grow up and how they develop with the large population. And I want to experience more things why after I, I before I graduate. Yeah, China is kind of constantly changing. There's always a lot of interesting new technology around the cities. Uh, yeah, really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and how about you, Xiaojing? You are a Chinese student, but you're attending university all in English. Um, yeah. yeah. Can you tell us about that experience? Oh, okay, of course. So since uh, English is not only a language or, or a tool, but also a kind of culture or something like this. So the biggest difference between learning in English and Chinese, from my perspective, maybe the different ways of thinking. For example, for my major, international journalism, I always think that uh, one of the responsibilities for us is to be a kind of communication bridge between China and the Western countries. So in our daily study, we need to reading a lot of, uh, a, a lot of English news and other materials, uh, which can help us to understand the expressions and the thinking habits of the foreign medium. And what is interesting that sometimes you can see different images of China from their diversity perspectives. And at the same time, we are trained to talk and write in English so that, so that we have the ability to provide them our opinions in the way maybe they can easily understand and accept. Uh, this, may, this may not be comprehensive, but this is what I have felt in my studies. Yeah, thank you. It's a very unique experience. Yeah, so I have never been to Zhuhai, which is the city in southern China where UIC is located. So I'm very curious about the environment there. Bella, what is your favorite part about living in Zhuhai? Uh, first of all, the weather and the nature environment are really good in Zhuhai. Uh, in fact, from my point of view, China feels too crowded in any cities. But according to my Chinese friend, Zhuhai is very quiet and peaceful city compared to other cities. So at the beginning, I didn't understand it. But after I traveled to large cities such as Beijing or Guangzhou, Shenzhen, Qingdao, this kind of city, I was able to understand it clearly. So and then the coastline that follows the road of Zhuhai is really good. And it is good because uh, there are many seas. So in Korea, my hometown was Daegu, which is surrounded by mountain. But so at that time, I was not able to see many seas. But in Zhuhai, it is so nice to be able to ocean easily when I go out. <laughs> wow. Yeah, now I want to go. Um, <laughs> Jean, what about you? What's your favorite part about living in Zhuhai? I have to say the food is my favorite in Zhuhai because, you know, the 
Guangdong have a lot of different kind of food and my hometown is in the middle of the China. So uh, studying in Zhuhai uh, gave me the opportunity to enjoy more kinds of uh, delicious food uh, uh, in the south part of southern China. Yeah. What's your favorite Zhuhai cuisine dish? I don't know how to say it in English. It's maybe the Zao cha. Zao cha is a kind of breakfast, have a diversity uh, kind of food. Yeah, uh, I don't know whether you have ever he heard about it, but uh, it's worth trying. So I really rec recommend you to uh, come to Zhuhai to enjoy the Zao cha. Yeah, I'll take that as my recommendation for if I can ever go visit Zhuhai. Okay. That and the beautiful oceans. So as both of you are kind of coming to the end of your study journey at UIC, what are your plans for the future, Bella? Actually, I haven't made an exact plan yet, but I want to gradu gradually set my future goals by learning more major courses during my uh, remaining years of my college. And then if I want to study more about my major in the future, I will go to the postgraduate, of course. Or I want to go back to Korea first after my after I graduate, and then I want to enter some public company, uh, like national company or some agency that I can apply my major uh, knowledge and gain some various experience by some internship. And after that, if there is some international organization that I want to enter in any country, then I can I want to just work in the abroad, like some kind of NGO or international organization. So last summer vacation, I was uh, did some internship in Beijing, and then it is an NGO. So almost uh, all activity in this organization were conducted in English. So my Chinese was not that good, but actually there were no problem. So I was able to many, I was able to participate in many international conference or webinar or seminar. So it is really really valuable experience to participate in this kind of international conference or environment conference. So uh, I just, I want to work this kind of uh, NGO or international organization in my future. Yeah, that's an excellent plan. And I think your major globalization and development can prepare you very well for this type of yeah, career. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And Xiaojing, how about you? You're on the journalism track. What is yeah. looking ahead for your future? Um, so I will probably, uh, continue the postgraduate uh, abroad uh, in a media related field, but I haven't decided the school yet. And after graduation, I probably come back to China and work in the Chinese media industry. And uh, also Beijing is the best, best choice uh, for me because uh, you know, Beijing is the center of the uh, China and there are a lot of uh, different kinds of media uh, agency or news agency. So I think in Beijing, there may be a lot of opportunities for me to find a, a good job or find what I really interested in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are definitely a lot of opportunities in this field more and more. So I think it's a great path you have set out before you. Yes. All right, thank you. That was the last of the questions. I'm so happy to have heard from you guys and hear your great and unique experiences at UIC. Yeah, thank you. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for joining the interview.